Doja Cat just can't seem to stop beefing with her own fan base. Um, and she has a reputation for being an edgelord, which is not serving her well in 2023. So now she has told her fans that essentially they're losers who need to get a job. Uh, and I that doesn't agree. work. I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. It's not a good idea for business, but she is right, you know? Uh, she responded to her fans uh, calling themselves the Kittens, which is a name she previously endorsed, and said, My fans don't name themselves shit. If you call yourself a kitten or effing kittens with a Z, that means you need to get off your phone and get a job and help your parents with the house. Um, and she also told her fans that she doesn't love them. One fan commented on her post and said, I want to hear you say I love you guys, as you usually say to your fans. And she said, I don't, though, because I don't even know y'all. <laughs> and then they replied, we don't know you, but we have supported you through thick and thin. Mind you, you'd be nothing without us. There's you'd that. be working at a grocery store making songs on effing garage band, Miss High School Dropout. Wow! Wow, they go right for they go right for the throat. <laughs> yeah, Holy crap. damn. And then she said, "Nobody forced you. I don't know why you're talking to me like you're my mother, bitch. You sound like a crazy person." I, I do love Doja that she Kat doesn't isn't care. Not crazy, but her fans are also crazy, and Stan culture is definitely crazy. Doja is more based than the than the stands. Yeah, like I don't like her as a person, but I understand where she's coming from here. It's just not the best move for. If you want people to, to buy tickets to your tour, which is coming up. Um, and now fans are mad at her because she's dating a so-called racist incel. This guy named Jay Cyrus, Jeffrey Cyrus. Wait, how can he, wait, how can he be an incel if she's dating him? That's, you know, a good question, Brett. <laughs> I'm confused. I came across this thread that is now deleted called... Exposing Doja Cat's ugly, disgusting, racist incel 36-year-old boyfriend, Jay Cyrus, who loves, you... uh, who loves to get rimmed and is an abuser, manipulator, predator, okay. and a cheater. A thread. How... Wait, 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 wait. So you One can of be... these things is not like the other. Just wait, so you can be a, you can be a, a white supremacist of any, co of any color, and now you can somehow be an incel and enjoying getting rimmed. How does one get rimmed? If you are, in fact, also an incel. Seems like that's Those somewhat are... unrelated from the other claims. You can't be rimmed and be an incel. Sorry, those are mutually exclusive. But since that thread has been deleted, it's beyond me. I, I don't know what the allegations against this guy actually are. I saw people saying he was DMing me when I was a minor, blah, blah, blah. He's been <laughs> accused of uh, being predatory towards fans uh, being manipulative and controlling to women, which in this day and age could mean literally anything. Um, but he, they, they were like reposting this apology that he did for privately messaging and flirting with fans, sexting fans. And I mean, it's a bad idea. He, he's, he was a partnered Twitch streamer doing this. If you're DMing your fans in this way, using your clout to get, nudes from your fans yeah. it's a bad idea because they obviously idol worship you and when you don't want to talk to them anymore they're going to expose you yeah. it's a classic story and it's happened a million times but i don't think that necessarily makes him a predator unless he was actually i mean if he was dming kids like obviously disavow but nothing has been proven yet and she responded to her fans asking her to denounce her boyfriend she said, um, well, here, here's one that said, Wait, girl, everyone is unstanding you. Even if you paint yourself gold, it won't make things better. And she responded, I want y'all to read this comment and take it as a message. This is in all caps, by the way. I don't give a F what you think about my personal life. I never have and never will give an F about what you think about me or my personal life. Goodbye and good riddance to you miserable hoes. It's kind of like the comic book industry where the, it's like a, a, a 10,000 times worse version of the comic book industry where they say, if you don't like my politics, don't buy my books. She's like, if you don't like it when I talk about my boyfriend getting rim jobs, don't buy, listen to my music. When one of her fans <laughs> asked her uh, if she should rename her account and she was called a kitten, uh, Doja Cat replied, just delete the entire account and rethink everything. It's not too late. 
I mean, it's not bad life advice, yeah. but she's still, you know, antagonizing her own fans, which isn't a good idea. Not long term, not a long term strategy. So, well, it's like one thing, like the reason people hated it when they would do it in comic books is because like you're given like... Um, you're expected to be the caretaker of this famous IP. Right. Like, it's like, here, please write this Captain America comic book. Uh, this character who's been around since, like, what, the 30s or the 40s, uh, and and do it justice. And instead you say, yeah, take that, you white supremacist. Instead you say Batman uh, is a fascist. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, but that's, like, that's, you're that's ruining it for the comic. You're ruining it for the, for the creator of the of the comic or for the industry. You're ruining it for the company that owns the, the, the IP. You're ruining it for the other people on the book with you. Like, you're not just the writer. You know, it's not just you, the writer. There's also an artist uh, drawing the comic. There's editors. There's there's a lot of people involved in that. She's just kind of, I guess she's ruining it for herself and whoever else makes money off of her if she makes money. Yeah, I mean, if I were Doja Cat or if I were in her position. There's a $20 one there from Olivia Clare. She said, I never thought I would hear Brett or Mary talk about getting rimmed. Happy Tuesday, friends. Mary, I love the hair today. Brett looking good as always. Let's get another crisis party and hit the like button. Yes. Uh, do that. I would love another. I, I I said in the chat. I said crisis. I was like they're all saying they're Mary Simps in the in the in the chat. Uh, I'm like, well, get a second crisis party for Mary if 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 such simping is true. It's not for Brett. Yeah. Well, yeah, not for me. <laughs> nobody's nobody's simping for me. But we will simp for Mary and get her a second crisis party. Um. But yeah, like if you're if you're doing this in comics, you're ruining it for a lot of other people. She theoretically, I guess, is too because she's got producers. She's got the the label. She's got other people that make money. But still, she's the money maker. When somebody ruins Captain America, Captain America's the money maker, not your garbage ass writing. Yeah. Like Well, if if I were Doja Cat and I had a following of millions of people, I probably wouldn't like them either. You know? <laughs> what? Right? Wh like, why? Well, I mean, it's just they expect you to have a personal relationship with them yeah. that doesn't exist. Yeah. Like you become, you were talking about this earlier, you become captive to your audience and you have to become the caricature of what appeals to them. Yeah, audience capture. And you end up resenting yourself and the fan base after that happens. The, guys, there's a really good video after this episode today. Uh, yeah, boy, Zach from Comics Matter did a really good video about audience capture where he kind of goes through the concept of audience capture, talks about Nick Avocado, Avocado. Yeah. Uh, he talks about some other people, but it's really, really interesting about, you know, you find one or two topics that your audience really, really likes and you kind of become a, a slave in many ways to them. Uh, you become beholden to them under that concept and it's really, really interesting. So I, I do recommend going and checking that out. So you, yeah, there's a, there's a recipe for some uh, distrust, or not distrust, but for a, a certain amount of anger towards your audience, right? A certain amount of, um, what would, what would the term for it be? I mean, when they create these parasocial relationships yeah. with influencers or celebrities, that's obviously a maladaptive behavior. And it comes off as, as weird and intrusive when someone is asking you to like, tell me you love me and you yeah. don't even know that person. I would resent that too, if I were her, but at the same time, she's not the most likable person on earth either. And yeah. she has a spotty past. Um, people are talking about how she, you know, rose to fame as this like meme lord, edge lord persona. I mean, she literally made a video dressed up as a cow and said, bitch, I'm a cow. Yeah. Like she got her stardom off of a meme and probably off of the lockdown if we're being honest she has that to credit for her fame as well i mean you have to appreciate the people that support you but at the same time that doesn't mean you have to have a fake personal relationship with them and manipulate their emotions to get their support that's yeah. not fair to expect from them it's uh it's like an age-old question right like how much do you owe your audience who then supports you? You have the Tom Cruise route where he thanks you every five minutes. And I appreciate that. And I, I think a lot of it in the same way. Like, look, I see people in the chat that roast me, but at the end of the day, if they choose to come here and watch, even if it's hate watching or they're here for just to see you and they, and they use that angel studios app to block me out because <laughs> I'm indecent, like they're still showing up. Right. And I, I have, uh, I still consider it a bit of an honor to be able to do it for work, but at the same time, 
time, uh, it will it would get old for somebody of her of her stature, somebody who's been doing it uh, for an audience that large. I mean, you have to know that if a celebrity or an influencer is telling their audience that they love them, it's fake. Yeah. But it's weird that they appreciate it regardless. It's sort of like how people talk about Donald Trump and his his populist yeah. um, message. Like, when he told all of these people, like, we're going to get your, your coal jobs back, they knew that it wasn't true and that it's hopeless, but still appreciated that he saw their suffering and and affirmed it rather than telling them, you know, like Hillary did, go F yourself, uh, you know, your jobs are never going to come back, adapt or die. What did, what did Mike Pence say recently? It's like, it's not my, like, <laughs> not, it's not my problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Like you, they, they must know that when Doja Cat s tells her fans, I love you, that it's not a <laughs> genuine statement. Well, it's not to you as an individual. It's to you as a fan base, as a whole. That's, I guess, different. You can't love an, a group of people, yeah. Yeah. right? It's, a, it's the same way that you can't hate a group of people. It's, they're individuals at the end of the day. Yeah. It's, uh, but, I mean, that's the world we're going to live in now for a while, considering, look, we spend less time in the real world than ever these days. You spend mo a lot of people, the majority of the population, I would guess, here in the West, spend a lot more time with digital friends and with and in parasocial relationships than they do with people in the real world. What's funny about that is, like, I think that that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are so unhappy. Like, or at least more tense or more anxious than they've ever been. Like, I find that if I fall into one of those traps where I spend more time online than, than is necessary, like, it puts me in a worse mood. Even if it's not, like, a bad interaction. Even if it's not a bad thing, I'm staring at a screen for too long. Uh, it's like you're, 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 like, looking for connection in a way that's it's real, but it's only so real and very different from what it is to experience it in the real world. And it's a recipe for, you know, a lack of emotional stability or not stability, but a lack of um, real connection. At least for stan culture, the stands like the whole implication there, if you're standing someone is that you endorse everything they do, both publicly and privately. Yeah. And support and celebrate them just for existing. And if you do, if you idolize somebody you're going to end up despising them. You'll you'll end up despising whatever you idolize when it doesn't give you what you thought it was it was meant to give you. It's in I've heard the same thing from a lot of other people who are they say like when somebody really likes you on social media, right? Like if you may if like you have a YouTube channel or something, it's like they really really like you. They like to send you messages and say that they really really yeah. like you. And then if you don't respond the way they want you to respond, they get very it's angry. Like, don't meet your heroes, yeah. but the 2023 version is don't tweet your heroes. Yeah, yeah, in a lot of ways. And now she's lost over 350,000 followers. Wow, I thought it was 185,000. According to Social 000. Blade. Wow. Yeah, it says Doja Cat loses 350 fans, uh, 350,000 fans after she defended her racist white boyfriend. And she's there's, been on a blocking spree. She's also blocking a lot of her fans. There's a $20 super chat there from Burgundy Blue. Speaking of audience relations, what do you guys think of your audience and their comments? I've noticed a lot of weird, rude comments toward Brett and weird, simpy comments toward Mary, especially on your YouTube shorts. Um, look, I, like people, people say stuff. It's uh, I just don't read most of them, but I do see a fair amount. They show up uh, algorithmically. I have to look at some of them when I'm setting up the stuff for the day. I don't like it, but there's nothing you can do about it. It's part of the job. And a lot of the people on the YouTube yeah. shorts don't even follow us, and that's probably yeah. the first time they've even seen us, so they're going to just give their first impression reaction. Yeah. But like, my course of action is that I just don't get into private correspondence with any people that I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's different for me because I'm female. Because you're a girl. Because you're a girl. I don't... I don't D I don't respond to people's DMs and that can come off as rude if they want to see it that yeah. way, but that it, it's the name of the game. And, and then it becomes like, who do you choose? And then like, yeah. who do you choose to interact with? And it seems like, like Doja Cat yeah. regrets courting that, uh, that like audience and like giving them this false sense of closeness with her and is now lashing out yeah. when it was her mistake to, to court that type of relationship with them in the first place. And she also doesn't seem able to accept that 
being a public figure means your personal life and personal decisions um, and, and your personal relationships are going to be on the table for criticism. Yeah, and and at the end of the day, here, like somebody has rightfully pointed out, like when like when we've talked about this stuff before, because it has come up, like they're like, look, at the end of the day, like your job's not that hard. <laughs> it, like, is that true? Like, the, more goes into it than just turning on a camera and staring at the screen uh, and staring and talking to people. There's a certain amount of like um, you kind of put yourself out there by doing something like this. But at the end of the day, even if it is. A lot of work and I do believe you know whether it's you know producing writing editing all the things that go into it it's still an amazing job and that's a blessing to have so I don't have any complaints about that but it's just it has its own unique circumstances but if we're gonna call Hollywood people crybabies then I guess people have the right to call us crybabies if there's things that bother us right yeah like that's 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 fair game so it is what it is I just wouldn't stoop to the level of like arguing with people online about it oh yeah when know. when people say stuff to me i just she's not doing herself any favors yeah. by engaging with it because you're making the hate louder i never like i almost never respond if somebody says the the, the when, I, when i talked about the dadvocate the that lady who i i loved and would like would love to be able to get on the channel like she's she she has the kill them with kindness policy Whereas like people will send her vile messages where somebody's like, you're, you're, you're a B word and you're not doing anything for men and you're awful. And she's like, I will continue to fight for your right as a man to, to get equal custody with your, for your children. I will, I will fight for your, like she, she always responds with kindness, not with rudeness. Because mm -hmm. like at the end of the day, a lot of the people who are saying something negative about you, they don't care about you either way. They just want a response. That's what they clamor yeah. for. They don't, they don't think twice about it. I think you. even responding yeah. with kindness is, is not necessarily the best not a good yeah. course of action. I used to, I used to tag like, like every time somebody would say something mean about my, my skating, I would pin that comment to the top of that post Yeah, as just a way to be like, good for you. But, I feel like even blocking people gives them a sort of response that they want. So I don't yeah. do that either. Usually. Yeah. I don't know. She's like, she's like in her in Doja Cat circumstances are a lot different than what ours would be. She lives in a very different yeah. world than we do. It's not like we're celebrities like she is. Also, like now they're just drudging up shit that doesn't even make sense. Um, one person tweeted, Doja Cat had a racist song called Didn't Do Nothing to honor the racist white incel population. And they're accusing her of you know, going on 4chan and being in racist chat forums, blah, blah, blah. But if you actually look at that song she made, it's not racist in any yeah. sense of the word. And you're just kind of weaponizing her race against her by calling her self-hating if she doesn't, you know, tout the, the lines that, she, that you want her to. I also don't know what made, did they explain what made their bo her boyfriend racist? I no, actually. I think they just said that he was he was manipulative and controlling toward women okay. because he was a Twitch streamer and he had like private chats with his fans. What is what is worse? Uh, Which is unwise but not predatory. What what, what is worse? Uh having pro like oh, I guess they were sexual chats, is yeah. that what they're saying? So what is worse that or uh or getting guys to give you tons of money like a like an amaranth? Yeah, she's doing the same thing. Yeah, but but it's not called predatory. It's you know using men. It's getting your bag, queen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what they're saying is the guy's just bad at business. He's doing it for free. He's not doing it for money. Usually, when you prop up somebody into the social media influencer space, they're going to use that influence for bad things. I would never want to be like a public figure, like like that. Like I can't imagine like that life of like somebody especially if you're doja cat who's like clearly combative and likes to argue with the people it's got to be like catnip every time somebody says something mean to her yeah. she just doesn't want to get it catnip i didn't even do that on purpose <laughs> I, I didn't actually catch that till after i said it that's how dumb i am um but like it's got to be hard right like she's she feels inclined to respond and she's always going to take the bait yeah. and know that that's how the internet is she like by reiterating so much that like she doesn't care what they say i don't give an f what you think about my personal life blah blah blah. it's just like when florence Pugh posts an essay about how she's so confident and comfortable with her body if you have to reiterate something over and over again yeah. 
you're probably overcompensating and you're defensive because you do care about getting that backlash. Yeah. Like everyone cares what people think of them. Whether you want to believe to it or not. To some degree. To some degree, yeah. Like, uh, if that Denying person, that doesn't help. Yeah. Doesn't do you any favors. Like, look, it's like a lot of that stuff is like, it does like, because like other than the show, I, for the most part, like I post my skating on Instagram. That's about it. I tweet sparingly and it tends to be positive stuff. And I really only started that Twitter. I only got back on Twitter because it was good like to talk about it because it's good promotion for the show. Otherwise, I wouldn't want to be a like in any type of way a public figure at all. Like mm-hmm. at all. Even a little bit. So I, don't know. I also find it weird to imply that just dating someone means that you endorse every decision that they ever made before yeah. you dated them. Yeah. Like it's not a business partnership, you know? I don't think you know any anyone an explanation for what someone else did in their past. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye guys.